really just let this go, and, and as long as people have questions and things like that, um, we, we spend as much time as we need on this stuff before then we get to the physical stuff in my courses, because while the, the physical stuff obviously requires skill acquisition and takes some repetition and things like that, if you do this part right, you don't need all that other stuff. This in a lot of ways is more important, okay? And the better you are at these things, then the rest of the stuff is, is moot, right? And so, um, like I said, uh, the other stuff requires more skill acquisition, but the important thing is we start to mindset and we start to uh, be a little more um, critical in our thinking. And if we do that well, then, then again, the rest of it is not, not nearly as important. So I want to make sure that we got this out, uh, that we get that out of the way in our courses. And so, uh, like I said, this is a, this is a different type of uh, class. Um, <clears throat> with that, um, first the caveat though, is people have a tendency, uh, or I don't, I, I want to make sure that when we leave here, we're not discouraged about our ability to do this because my goal is to make you fully appreciate the complexity that comes and, and, and a more comprehensive view of this thing called personal safety or self-defense and things like that, right? And so um, it's very, someone's got to be front row. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, so uh, you know, I, I do not want to give the impression Okay? Although I can see why it might be the case where you're like, well, crap, I can't do anything right. Because if I do that, I'm damned if I do, I'm damned if I don't. If I do this, I'm going to get in trouble here. Or if I do this, this is going to happen. What do I do? I can't, you know, I don't want to give that impression. The, the, you know, we're, we're obviously working on the assumption that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, right? That we can come out of this relatively okay, right? Um, but... It, it, it would be my position that we can't be honest. I mean, we have to be honest. We have to, you know, a fight or a self-defense situation is a big, hairy, ugly thing, right? And it's not going to be pretty um, or the aftermath. And it is complicated. And it does not do us any good to sugarcoat that. It, it, we need to be, uh, we, we can't be naive to that. And so until we can make a, uh, a more of a completely, um, you know, uh, a complete view, an honest view of things, then we can formulate a strategy that addresses all those concerns, deals with all those things in an honest way, right? And so, ultimately, and, you know, I tell them my course, and I have to tell them too, because, I, again, I, this, this can be a downer, but the whole point of just doing it is so then we can, again, come out the other side, and come up with a strategy to win. I mean, that, I mean, that's why I do it. I don't do it to discourage people. I do it because, you know, we ultimately want to win, right? But we have to have, have a strategy that's going to work. And we have to understand the problem first, right, in its entirety. And so that's what this class is. So, again, don't, uh, um, and, and you're, you've made the first step, right? You, you've come here to learn. And that is so important, right? And because this is not the most pleasant stuff to talk about, right? And I often, I've been accused of being paranoid before, right? And things like that. And, you know, I, I you know, think through some rather extreme what ifs in terms of personal safety. That's my job, okay? Um, you know, and, and I, I think critically about those things. And, and some people, you know, think again that I'm a little paranoid or whatever for that. But, um, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, the, the idea is that, you know, if, if we've at least started thinking about it, then, you know, that, that knowing's half the battle. We, I read a, I, well, I didn't read the study, I read this, the, the results of the study that uh, in policing, uh, deadly police encounters, those that were mentally unprepared, 75, they, they attributed their survival, those that were mentally unprepared attributed their survival, 75% of, uh, of, of that component was luck, right? 
Those that consider themselves mentally prepared consider their mental preparation 75% of the contributing factor and luck 5%. Okay? So that mind setting, I mean, goes a long way. And again, that's what we're here to do. And you guys made the first step to come and do that, right? Um, and so, uh, like I said, that, uh, that, don't underestimate that, okay? Um, my goal for you guys today is for you guys to basically be a little more critical in your thinking after you leave. Okay? And so there are three main uh, uh, components of today's talk. Okay? First, we're going to talk about predator profile um, and predator process, kind of like how this works a little bit more on, uh, on, a, on a level. And then, uh, and <clears throat> then second, we're going to talk a, a little bit about uh, kind of an overall comprehensive view of, of self-defense. What is self-defense? Not just the physical parts, but all this other stuff, okay? And then thirdly, we're going to go over the myths and misconceptions, okay? Because there's a lot of advice out there. Some of it is good. Some of it is rather contextual. Certain circumstances it makes sense. Certain circumstances it doesn't. And then some of it is absolute crap, okay? in my opinion. And if you haven't already figured out, I'm a rather opinionated individual, if you don't know me all right, right? Uh, and, and that's, uh, you know, you don't always have to share my opinion, but you have to have one. And as I said, this is not the most pleasant stuff to think about. And, and people aren't, a lot of times don't want to dwell on this stuff. And, and as I said, I'm, I'm really grateful that you guys took the first step of coming and learning about it and, and getting more educated. Okay. Cause then you can start this middle process, right? This mind setting is so important. But my goal is for you to be a more savvy consumer because you are going to be bombarded with more information after you leave, especially the ones that you guys are in high school and, you know, getting to ready for college and everything else. You're going to get, you know, talked to and there's going to be a lot of information out there. Women, you know, there's a lot of information out there. And, and to be honest, in a way, this is also research for me because I don't read like the same magazines that the 20, 20 year old women do in my class, right? <laughs> I don't read the same magazines, right? I don't get the same emails or whatever, okay? Well, sometimes I do because people think, you know, hey, I got this email, right? Um, and there's like one floating around. Anybody seen the one that's floating around that has like, you know, don't uh, wear overalls because they'll snip them and take them down or women can't wear long hair? No, didn't get the, oh, the overall no. one? Okay. Can't wear, rapists look for, rapists look for, uh, long hair, ponytail, so they can grab their hair. Anybody heard that one? Okay, right? Whatever. Okay. So I mean, I could grab his hair. Right now, if you want to shave your head like my prison guard friends do, then sure. Right? Then you don't have to worry about that. So if you like the Sinead, if you like the Sinead O'Connor look, then go ahead. But otherwise, does she? Okay, well, anyway, you need to come so, up with another example because they don't know who Sinead O'Connor is. I know, I know. So, so, but you get the idea. So that it is, you know. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of emails out there, and I swear to gosh, some of them are so bad that I joke that I think they were written by rapists for counterintelligence purposes, right? Um, so, uh, but as I said, you're going to be bombarded with that, okay? And so, one of my goals for my courses and for you today is for you to be a little more critical in your thinking, okay, and be a little more, uh, as I said, savvy consumer, so that you know later on when you get that information. You can go, okay, hold on, does that make sense, right? Based on what we know about the predator process, based on, you know, other things, is this re rather realistic or not, okay? But then, you know, again, the myths and misconceptions, I certainly have my list of, of favorites and things like that. But, you know, if you've heard some things and stuff like that, then by all means tell me or ask some, you know, I'm going to ask some audience participation there uh, as well. And sometimes you come up with stuff I haven't heard before, okay? I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Well, based on this, I would say that's good advice or not good advice or whatever. And as I said before, you don't always have to share my opinion, but you need to have one, and, and that's where the process goes. Yes? Um, what, I mean, you haven't started talking about this yet until you get into it, but the uh, information that you have about how uh, predators are thinking, where does where all uh, places does that come from? From the people themselves, from police work, from you know history. What type of background is it that you'll be sharing with us about that? Various places. Um, there are 
This is my recommended reading list over here that I donated some of the books to the library here so you can have them. Um, and uh, yeah, on the on the Gentry Facebook page, I, I put a while back the top five self-defense books for anybody, right? And that's the bulk of that list right there. Self books are authors, right? So some of these guys have multiple books. Um, so some of that is, is very important places. Uh, another person whose book is really outdated, but I benchmark a lot of my stuff on, is a uh, guy by the name of Stephen Thompson. Okay? And uh, Stephen Thompson went to a good school. Hi, you and was actually in the uh, martial, taught in the martial arts program there. Um, and uh, basically, he was really one of the first, he, he's now one of the foremost experts in the country, if not the world, on sexual predation, and uh, is a pre FBI predator profiler, um, worked a lot of the high, well, I presume he's worked still, but um, I know he's worked a lot of the high profile cases in the past, Mike Tyson, etc. Um, and uh, he was really, late 70s, early 80s, he was really the first that went to the predators, okay? Everything prior to him was victim-based research, okay? So there's a rape reported in the hospital. <coughs> the researcher went to the hospital. What were you wearing? Where were you going? And asking all the questions of the victim, which is crap, um, but that's what they did. He was the first to actually go to the predators. He actually went to the rapist and go, okay, what are you looking for? What's going on here? How do you do this? Okay. And um, he is still, in my opinion, the seminal work right, for this. And so a lot of my stuff, and I'll, I'll point out a couple of places there. So there is research in different places and, and stuff like that, again, different sources. But he's one, of the main, he's one of the main ones. But yeah, he was one of the first, and so now a lot more is victim now. One of the, his first critiques was, well, your sample size is, you know, you, only, you had to go to the prison, so, you, you know, it's only convicted rapists. What about all the other rapists, right? Well, it's kind of hard to just get guys to self-identify themselves as rapists, right? And then you can ask, you know, are you a rapist? Can I talk to you for a second, right? You know, so, um, you know, so there's that part, too. But um, uh, anyway, um, yeah, so he's one of the big ones. So, um, so anyway, but that's an overview of what we're going to be doing. And uh, again, there will be some part of this audience participation. Other times, uh, I do want to try to get us, some of you might not want to be here all day, so I, I really am going to try to stay closer to 11, but then I can be here later, so Q&A after that, if you guys, and I, I, I will try to give you a break too. Um, but, uh, you know, if you if you got other questions, I'd be happy to stay and, and offer more opinions and, and ask more specific questions. But let me chug through a bunch of this first, okay, and we'll get it going. To set the stage, uh, and oh, by the way, obviously there are guys in the class, um, we're going to be talking, a lot of what we're going to pre-frame is, is uh, um, for sexual assault for women, of course, but uh, it's important to note that the dynamics of a lot of what we're talking about, including you know the predator process and everything else, is actually remarkably similar, right? And so I tell my courses, my college courses, that, you know, they're guys, there's usually, you know, 30 women and like three guys, which, you know, I don't understand why they don't want to stay in that class. But, um, <laughs> you know, they, uh, they, uh, they, you know, I tell them, look, if this was an all-male class, I would teach it almost identically, okay? The context might be different, okay, in certain circumstances, right? So you have to sit there and go, now, how does this apply to me maybe a little bit? Okay, but generally speaking, the, the, the material, the content, what we do is almost the exact same. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. Okay? So again, um, and again, uh, uh, Stephen Thompson would, you know, he's got something like 23 different predator profiles. So, I mean, we could split hairs, right? But uh, for, for, the, for the most part, this works remarkably similar. But, you know, let's talk about sexual assault a little more specifically, or at least to con put things in the context of sexual assault a little bit more, at least to start with. Okay? Um, Half of all women in their lifetime will be approached by a sexual predator. Of those, half will get away. So that means one in four women become a victim of sexual assault. The number one at-risk group are freshman women pledging a sorority. One in three. This is where I say freshman women raise your hand and like two-thirds of my class raise their hand. Okay? One in three in that group become uh, victims. Okay. So obviously this is a big problem, and I suspect that might be some of your motivation for being here today. 
Okay. Um, of that group, or of those rapes, about uh, 85, 90 percent of those rapes are acquaintance rapes. Sometimes you hear the term date rape. Don't have to be on a date with the person, but it's someone you know. Okay. Obviously, then the other 10, 15 percent is more stranger rapes. About 30 percent of those stranger rapes are reported. Only about 30 percent. In case of acquaintance rape, that number goes down to 1%. That number goes even lower in smaller, close-knit communities where everybody knows everybody. Okay? Or DePauw, a small liberal arts school that's smaller than most high schools. Okay? So, you know, it's, it's pretty funny because every... Uh, when I go back to school here in a couple of weeks at IU, they're going to be the, the college paper is going to be this hotel week where everybody moves in and has nothing to do for a week but party and get in trouble. And there's usually so many rapes. I don't even read the paper anymore, but there's a, they make a big hall blue about, oh, there's like three or four rapes, you know, this, you know, this week alone or whatever else and stuff like that. And they make a big deal about it. And, and I'm not certainly saying that's not a big deal, but... Um, 30, 35,000, 60% women, that's a weekly average. That's, that's not anything abnormal. Okay? But they just decided to make a big deal of it that week. Right? That's where we are in society. That's, that's, the pro, that's how big the problem is. Okay? Um, but uh, anyway, um, so again, I suspect that's probably uh, why we're here is, is, is some of that... Uh, um, that we're aware of that problem, and again, one per, most of the time it's the it's the acquaint, it's the person you know. So gone is the you know the idea that it's the kind of crazy or, or you know weird looking guy behind the bushes. Okay, actually, you, the typical predator profile is what we would consider your all American boy, right? He uh, probably lettered in varsity, had a varsity letter in high school, maybe was student leader of some type. Is typically the alpha male of his group. Because the same thing that makes him want to be uh, dominate women, okay, he also has to control other relationships and things like that. So he tends to be the alpha male in this group. Okay, I heard a phrase. This is a Stephen Thompson line, but I can't uh, summarize it any better. Okay, you know that guy that everybody thinks is a cool guy and everybody likes, but you wouldn't want him dating your sister. That guy. Now, I'm not saying that every guy like that is categorically a rapist, right? But we know what we're talking, and everybody know what I'm talking about, right? Okay? Because there's a difference between doing a cool guy and being a nice guy and being a good guy. Okay? And that's a very important distinction. Okay? And so, um, anyway, so, and that makes it kind of tough, of course, if you're in the dating scene, because, you know, uh, again, there's, there's it, it's tough to... Uh, again, it's not the, the guy in the trench coat, you know, that is awkward or whatever else always. That's not your typical profile, right? Like I said, your typical profile is your all-American boy, okay, um, and things like that. Now, so against that backdrop, let's talk about the predator pro uh, process, okay? How does, and again, Stephen Thompson was the predator, said, so what are you looking for or whatever else, okay? First and foremost is obviously target selection. It is not the way you dress. It is not whether you have a ponytail or not. Uh, it is not all of those other things that sometimes is perpetuated or whatever else. The, the only real physical type of selection process is rapists tend to rape plus or minus five years of their own age and same socioeconomic status. Okay? Now, I would argue that's just a question of that. 85% of rapes are all acquaintance rapes, right? Well, who do you know? You know your peers. Same age, same socioeconomic status. Right? So I would argue that that, that takes care of most of that. But anyway, so again, uh, it, you know, what you're dressed, what you're wearing, all those things really have no bearing. And, and I could go on some tangential uh, uh, studies that uh, kind of validate that or whatever, that it, it's none of those things. Okay? Plus or minus five years, same socioeconomic status. Okay? What really matters, okay, is once there's a target selection, okay, then there is going to be an approach and evaluation.
And let's try that again. Um, approaching evaluation. Okay. So when you in in our fast classes, we call this the wolf, right? This is the interview that precedes the attack. Okay. So the predator is going to come up and determine if their initial assessment is correct. Okay? If they, you know, if this was a, a stranger rapist or whatever in a parking lot, come up, hey, do you have the time? Okay, or or whatever, start engaging you in questions all the time, getting closer to with within attack range. Okay, if this is an acquaintance rape, it might go more something like this. Okay, you're at a party, bar, whatever else, you're, and some guy sits down beside you. They don't ask to sit down because that gives you an opportunity to reject them. They just sit down beside you. I'm not saying that everybody sits, that sits down beside you without asking is categorically a rapist. I'm just saying. Okay, so they sit down beside you. Okay, and they, uh, you know, they start having a couple of questions. You know, they start talking to you or whatever. And oh, you, it's pretty thirsty. It's hot in here. You need a drink? No, I'm good. Right? No, you need a drink. No, I'm I'm pretty good. No, you, let me get you a drink. So they get you a drink. Maybe he drugged it. Maybe he didn't. Whatever. But basically, even if he didn't, <clears throat> you know, he he's sitting there and he's he, he, you don't want to be rude, so you drink the drink, right? After a little while, oh, let me get you another drink. No, I'm really good. I'm, I got to drive or whatever else, and my friends are no whatever. No, let me. I uh, just one more. Come on, okay? And you get and he gets you another drink, and you drink that drink. Every time you drink the drink, what are you telling him? Basically, you're saying that you can be dominated. He got he gave you some he he got you to do something that you didn't want to do. And so there are these little battles of will that precede the bigger one, okay? And how you handle those little tests determine whether he'll leave you alone and go on and find another target, okay? <coughs> or, or basically you're it. Okay? So if we fail that test from our perspective, pass it from his, then we're then we're it. Okay? If we pass that test from our perspective, fail it from his, he'll go on and find another a target. Again, as a party, there's a hundred other girls there. Right? He'll wait until the next girl walks by, right? or whatever. Okay? And so it's very, this is very, also very important to point out that what we're talking about today, we are not talking about rape or assault prevention. A rape is going to happen. He's going to rape somebody. Okay? Just not going to be you. Sex from the next person. Okay? It would be great that if in my lifetime we got to the point where we were talking about prevention, but we are not there as a society. And I suspect we, I'm, I'm rather pessimistic we ever will be, right? But all we can do is, you know, prevent it for as many people that we care about as we can, okay, in our community and things like that, right? Um, so, I mean, it's, it, let's point out, that's, we're not stopping anything from happening. We're just protecting ourselves. That's just the way it is, okay? So, anyway, so we, do, we approach and we fail from our perspective, okay, the approach and evaluation, then of course there is the conquest. Okay, now, the goal for the predator, a sexual predator for the evening, is to, um, you know, get a conquest. And, and again, guy, you know, this could go for, you know, a resource predator too that you know, if he just needs money for drugs or, or whatever, okay? So it's the same process, right, in a generic sense, okay? Um, but for a sexual conquest, if he gets it consensually, right? So this is then obviously, actually, I skipped one. Next stage is isolation, okay? So this is going back to your place, his place, whatever, or again, if this was more stranger scenario or, or again, some type of mugging or whatever, it's been pre-selected parking garage, whatever it is, okay? Then the next stage is conquest, okay? Now, if you went back to his place, if he gets it consensually, then technically it's not a conquest, okay? But of course the problem becomes when he, he doesn't get it consensually, all right? And so then there are, you know, then it's going to get rougher, it's going to get intimidation, et cetera, until physically. <coughs> Etc. And by the way, the incidence of violence in acquaintance rape is almost always higher 
than in stranger rape. Okay? Because there is the shock and awe value that comes from a, uh, a stranger rape, right, in and, and, and our FAST class. I keep referencing FAST, which stands for Fair Adrenaline Stress Training. That is the, the course that I, I wholeheartedly endorse. We do it at our school. We do it in the colleges. Um, and, it, and so uh, some people in the room have done that class. Uh, and it addresses some of this that go, that's going on, okay? Um, and so uh, <clears throat> uh, anyway... That is that wind of hate, the, the intimidation that comes out, is, is enough to shock most people into submission, okay, from a stranger. An acquaintance, you know, they have to rough you up a little bit to get them to, for you to take them seriously, right? So usually the incidence of violence is, is higher in an acquaintance rate than it is a stranger rate, right? okay? Uh, again, most just time fear gets most uh, of the stranger rapes into submission, okay? Um, now... So once the conquest happens, the next stage is termination. Because not only does he want to uh, uh, achieve the conquest, he also wants to get away with it. Okay? And so that includes things like um, telling the victim, you know, confusing the victim, intimidating the victim, uh, to report it, etc. Um, society does tend to put a lot of blamer uh, on the victim, and that's crap. But that's the way it goes. And so, um, and the and the predator knows this and is going to use that to his advantage, right? And so, uh, you know, the goal here is to to get away uh, is to get away with it. Now I'm going to come back to this point here in just a minute, but let me go back and kind of tie this back up into here. Okay, so. <clears throat> Going back to the target selection and the approach and evaluation, okay? There is really, as I said, it's not where you dress, it's not the way you you look. The number one, the number one criteria that the the predator looks for, and again, Stephen Thompson looks for ah, the rapist, is eye contact. Okay? Um, and so because eye contact implies that you're, if you can look them in the eye, that implies confidence. Confident people are more, A, <coughs> likely to fight back, B, report the incident after the fact. Right? Both of which he doesn't want. Okay? And so, again, it's important to point out that this is, uh, this is a planned and premeditated fact. This is not, rape is not an impulsive act. Okay? It is planned, it is premeditated, and given that the typical rapist rapes something like 17 times before he stops or goes to prison, it is also probably well practiced. Okay? He's got it down. Okay? And so, you know, this is not impulsive, again, you know, uh, in, you know sexual thing or whatever, right? And so, uh, again, this is, he, he's looking for a victim that he knows that things can be go according to plan. Okay? So... Uh, that and so he's looking for people who can be easily dominated and can easily be intimidated, okay? So he can get away with it, right? That's the important thing, okay? Now, um, who's heard? Anybody heard? Don't make eye contact, right? Certain, certain. Again, that's very contextual, and cultures are different, and everything else, right? But um, you know, again, that's one of the things we're going to come back to in a minute about um, being aware. But you know. Uh, um, here, here's your homework. Well, okay, let me ask you a question first. You're at a party or a bar or something like that, and, and uh, some of you ladies are off the market, maybe uh, a little bit at this stage. So, um, so uh, you've been married a long time. I'm not saying you can't. You're not. Whatever. Anyway, so, whatever. So, anyway, um, you're, you're, you're in a bar, you're at a party, and, and keep in mind, I'm usually telling this 18 to 21 year old, right? So you're at a bar, you're at a party, you're like looking up and looking down, you're both kind of taking stealing glances at the guy across the room or whatever else, and you both look up at the exact same time, and then, oh my gosh, he's looking at me, right? You know, you know what I'm talking about? Everybody down, right? Okay? Or you're walking down the street, and wow, I have to come up with a different landmark for this one because again I'm usually got campus examples here um, so you're walking down the street wherever you're going right 
um, out here, you're out here on the square, and you know, assuming that you're not you know doing this, which is even worse, but you're you've got a confident stride, uh, your head is up, okay, eye contact and confident stride, okay. So you know, if that means if you're lost, you know, sometimes we start to go like this. Man, you fake it till you make it. You know, you act like you know exactly where you are and where you're going, right? Men are good at this, right? But women need to practice a little more on that, right? Okay, but you know, you gotta you gotta act like you know what you're doing, right? And you have a place to be. But you're, if your eyes are up, in assuming that you're, you know, in, and someone's walking the other way, your lines of sight are gonna meet, right? Who's the first to be like, "Wow, farmer market, really busy today. Look at that, pumpkins." Right? Whatever, right? Okay? Whatever. Okay? Who's the first to look away? I suspect some of us are. Okay? This is your homework. Okay? I want you staring people down. Okay? Make the other, hold the person's gaze long enough to make them look away. And it'll only take a fraction of a second. Right? But be able to make eye contact long enough to make the other person look away. Okay? Because... It, it, because if you don't have that mannerism walking down the street, um, you know, in broad daylight here or whatever else, you think, you know, circle center parking lot, middle of the night, whatever else, someone comes up, you're going to be like, okay, make sure, make good eye contact. Crap. Right? It's a mannerism. And if it's, and it has to be practiced, you have to have it. Doesn't mean you're not a confident person. But if you don't have that mannerism, they don't know that you're a confident person. And guess what? You're now a target. Okay? It's very important. Okay? And again, that's one of those things you can practice, you know, again, all the time. Make other person look away. Unless you meet someone else from one of my other courses, and then you better be there a long time. Right? <laughs> right? At the paw, I used to, like, the biggest, scariest-looking guy in my class, my martial arts student, I would plan outside the building for girls mm -hmm. to come into my self-defense class to see if they make eye contact. He walked in and like, yep, yep, nope, yep, nope, yep, <laughs> you know, and everything. This is so important, guys, okay? So important that you're able to make contact and give the impression, you fake it till you make it. You give the impression that you're a handful, whether you are or not, okay? Because that's the number one, that's one of the number one things to keep, get you bumped off the rest of this cycle. Okay? Have to be able to do it. Now, there's a difference between the, hey, what are you looking at, buddy, look, right? And the goo goo gaga eye look, and just that quick look glance, I know you, you don't scare me, moving on. I see you there, you don't intimidate me, moving on. Right? If you mess it up, you can blame it on me, right? I, I tell this again to the girls, I'm like, you know, look, you know, the guy at the party thinks you're interested, come on, I'm like, sorry, I'm not really interested. My instructor said I had to look at you. Right? You can you can you can blame it on me, that's fine. Okay? But again, if you don't have that mannerism, okay, you really need to get it. And and again, as we're pointing out, cultures are different, okay? Some, you know, different cultures will take eye challenges as a, or eye contact as a challenge or whatever else and stuff like that. So, you know, you gotta know maybe the more rules in the in, in, in those types of situations. But generally speaking, you know, what we're gonna be dealing with, that's that's crucial. Okay? I was just thinking about where would I apply this? Well, most of the time I'm not alone, but I do go out for runs. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I was thinking, you know, there's times where I've crossed the street and gone around the block or something to avoid. Yeah. Somebody. That's absolutely good too. And that's here in town. Like yeah. I run from the high school around the circle, around the square and back. That awareness is so important. But you know, and but yeah, just being able to just to you know that little hey nod, what's up, right type thing or whatever else, right. And it, it's very funny because I'm because of what I do, I'm very hypersensitive. Like I, I try, <laughs> you'll laugh, but I actually try not to scare people. Um, some of you think that I, that's contrary to my nature, but um, like random, random stranger people, I scare you. Know, I try to scare you all the time, but that's different, right? So, so like when I'm on campus, I, I can remember this time very distinctly. I'm, I'm, walking, to, I'm walking into my building, and, and this girl's running, and she's got her headphones on, and I'm kind of cynical. I'm like, this you know, girl's oblivious. Because most of the time they they walk out in front of my car with their headphones on and everything, you know, they're walking their iPod in and stuff like that. Um, and so anyway, and so she's running and I'm like, oh, crap. How do I? I don't want to like like scare her to death by like you know basically being right in front. I'm like, how am I gonna you know 
I got a cross, she's running towards me, I don't want to freak her out, you know, so again, I'm kind of sensitive to these things on campus or whatever, for her sake, or whatever, but, um, you know, but, so we're, but then she, she's completely aware, and as she's running, she looks, and she's like, nods, hey, and just keeps going, and like, and I'm like, and it like stopped me dead in my tracks, right, and I'm like, then I'm like, that was awesome, right, that, that is exactly what I'm talking about, right, then I wanted to chase her down and say how good she was, and I'm like, oh. That might be counterproductive. So um, don't don't do that. So anyway, right? So yeah. Um, but anyway, so again, you have to have those mannerisms, okay? For not only the target selection, but then also again, it goes back to the termination, okay? Because they don't want to get caught, okay? Now, let me also say this about the termination part, okay? And if we have been a victim or know a victim of sexual assault. Okay, well, let me you know make the the the, the blanket statement that I, you know every circumstance is a little different. Um, I can't, you know, I am not saying that this was your circumstance might have been different uh, or the situation. You know, I I'm not trying to be judgmental. Okay, uh, but as it relates to this, okay, um, ye you have to, um, one, with the conquest, okay, you have to decide that you're worth fighting for, okay, and you have to be willing to fight. Now, with the conquest part, the um, studies will show that if you fight back during the conquest, the ability to, or the, 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 the statistics are in your favor that the predator will break off the attack, okay? Now, there's a competing theory here, okay? and it's one by Stephen Thompson. Ergo, I put a little more, uh, 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 you know, stock into it, even though it flies in the face of statistics, and, and I'll attempt to reconcile the two. Um, but this is... Um, this is a planned premeditated event. He selected you as a target, plied you with drinks, took you back to his place, okay? This is gonna happen, okay? And so you're, you're in for a heck of a fight, right? Statistics are in your favor that if you fight back at this point, the predator will break off the attack, okay? But the competing theory is, as Stephen Thompson says, is well, look, Think about this process, man, you're it. He spent all this time and energy on you, and he's gonna get what he wants. And now you're in a fight, and keep in mind as a predator who, again, doesn't have the highest value of women, the same you know, flaws that make him a rapist, also probably doesn't like getting beat up by a girl, right? So you're in for one hell of a fight, okay? Now that also, keep in mind, we're not talking about then, they're also farther on the extreme, those that predators that really it's about the violence instead of the sexual conquest and the domination there and then the super extreme real psychos and fortunately relatively speaking those are you know um, you know rare but uh, you know basically um, that means that you two things are going to happen either you have to fight until you soundly defeat him or he beats you into submission and those are the only two outcomes at that point now, I would attempt to reconcile those two conflicting theories by this. And this is just my conjecture, okay? And that is, okay, what does soundly defeat mean, right? Well, some people that, you know, again, getting a little, you know, getting hit back. And again, this is planned, and she's fighting back, and crap, I don't want to get caught. <clears throat> you know, maybe it's not, maybe it's, maybe not their first rodeo, but maybe they haven't, they're not as seasoned as other rapists might be. You know, maybe, you know, maybe that's enough to make them skittish, other things, etc. okay? Other people, again, a little more comfortable doing this. Average rapist raped 17 times, okay? Um, doesn't mind a fight. You're in for one hell of a fight, okay? But you have to decide you're worth fighting for, okay? And you have to decide that, you know, you're going to, Fear, <clears throat> yeah, is, is, are you going to get hurt? Yeah. Okay. You have to fear 
you know, the aftermath of that rape more than getting beat up. You have to fear not seeing your loved ones again more than the more present danger right now. Okay? And you have to decide beforehand. That's where it goes back to mindset. You have to make the decision that you're going to, that, that that's more important. So that you're willing to do those things that you have to do there, okay? To keep fighting, okay? Because that this, this is not going to be easy sometimes, okay? It's also not going to be easy in this phase, in the termination phase, okay? I had a I had a student at IU who was a martial arts student, um, and one that had taken several classes, so kind of became a, a friend too, who, um, in. Uh, was raped by another one of our martial arts students at IU. I had him in class. That was awkward. Okay, um, and she came to me because she was a friend and explained the situation or whatever. And so she had a real crisis of faith because she was getting up there, you know, in, in rank and everything. She's like, I'm supposed to be like a, a role model to women and everything else, and and you know, I can't believe that you know this happened to me. Well, you know, and so she had a real crisis of faith and. And what she was doing, as well as you know what you know, and, and it, it was a little tough because it was one of those situations where you know again it wasn't a stranger in the bushes. By the time she realized things were going too far and things were out of control, it was a little too late for and you know he knew martial arts too and and everything else. So um, you know so so again she had that real crisis of faith, but it, you know he obviously did some things to to stack that against her a little bit and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, you got, you know, and I, this is the advice I gave her. This is the advice I would give anybody else. I would hope that you would give to anybody that you come across in this situation. Uh, and I, I hope that that isn't the case, but I know it will be for most of you. Um, and that is, look, it, 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 it came out, I have no doubt that he had done that before. I have no doubt he's going to do it again. Okay, and you know she's very accurately is like, if I prosecute, either legally or in this case through the university, you know the university has its own process. You can get them expelled from school and, and crap like that, right? Um, besides, you know more the legal. So and sometimes whether there's an actual case that the prosecutor wants to pick up or not, you know depends on how good the case is. Blah blah blah, right? Versus what it is to um, actually, uh, you know, again, the university setting has its own, you know, court system, if you will. So sometimes it's easier there. So, but anyway, she's like, I'm going to have to see him. I'm going to have to tell this story over and over again. You know, I'm going to have to relive this. That's damn hard. I understand that. Absolutely. It's going to suck. Right? But here's the thing. He approached, he evaluated, he thought you he thought basically he'd get away with it. Okay? And you lost a big battle. And I can't fully comprehend really what that actually means. Okay? I, I, I fully understand that. But my the only I would suggest to you though, right, if some other woman prior had found the courage to actually go back after him, then maybe you wouldn't be sitting in the situation you're sitting in. And if you can find the strength and the courage to do that and make his life miserable, then you might help save someone else. Right? And it's not going to really, you know, it's not really about revenge. Maybe it will be a little bit, but, you know, it. You know, it, and I know it's going to be super tough. And again, I can't. Every situation is is very different. But you know that I'm like he he didn't think you were strong enough to do this. Show me wrong. Show me's wrong. Right? You you lost that battle, but the war is not over. You can do a lot to make him hurt. Right? Get him kicked out of school. Right? Get a get a police record. Get those things. Right? That's the only way he's going to learn if there's some negative con consequences to his actions. 
and as a society, we need to have more women step up. Okay? Is that victim blaming? Not blaming. Is it suck that they're the ones that have to do it? Yes, it absolutely is. But that's the way it is, in my opinion. We have to, ha you have to show them, and again, I, I would counsel anybody that comes to me and tells me they're a victim, that they've been, become a victim uh, or survivor of sexual assault. Show them you're stronger than what they think you are. Give it back. In a, I mean, it's got to be a different way, obviously, but give it back to them. I had another lady who was in my class at IU, different lady who I told this or whatever, and she came back and, and again, because court process and everything else, and she was telling me a little bit, and she sent me an email, and she's like, he had to hire a really good lawyer. It's cost him at least $60,000, you know, to fight off the charges. I don't know if the prosecution is going to happen or not. But I never would have thought of that as a win until your class. That's kind of a big bat to you, yeah. right? You know, maybe he might think twice about doing this again. I'm not saying it makes things you whole. I, I completely understand that. But fight, you know, the war's not over. And, and I hope that, that people start to do that a little more. Okay? All right. Can we let, so that's the predator process and a little more about that. Okay. Next section will be kind of overall self-defense ideas. Uh, let's take like three, four minutes to quick potty break, stretch, get some blood flow going. We'll come back and we'll talk about the next section. <laughs> Don't run off. I'll chase you down. No sneaking out. I should have had a sign in with like name and address so I know where you live. I can't sit in Come stand in the back with me. It's nice out here. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so too. Do we need pauses? <laughs> no, that's fine. Actually, okay. Is our what? This is my you know idea or of of really a comprehensive self defense concept. Okay. First starts with basic awareness and avoidance. Now. We could talk a lot about this, and I am not, okay, because, you know, be smart, don't go, you know, but, you know, this includes, most of the time, don't walk alone at night and things like that. One of my self-defense courses is 8 o'clock at night, so girls have to walk alone at night for me to come to my class, for me to tell them, don't walk alone at night, okay? And you might have lives that require you to be out after dusk and things like that. I understand that, okay? So, uh, especially if you're with this group. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so, you know, that... Right now, all I'm going to say about the awareness side is that things are contextual, okay? And and we need to be a little more critical thinking on this. So this is I'll give you an example of this. Is um, again I have to change my my uh, environment here. Let's say you're here late one night, you know, midnight here at the library, <laughs> right? Yes. I got it. Yeah. Door. So anyway, so um. She's my daughter. Uh, and, you know, so you're going to walk over to uh, one of the establishments on the square that might still be open. Okay? Over here. Work with me here. This is not the best to account to give an example, all right? But, so work with me here. Okay? So you have two routes. Let's say we just, like, demolish part of the courthouse and it's just like an open field. Okay? So you have two routes. Okay? You can kind of walk up this street. It's sidewalk. It's got lighted... Uh, it's got you know street lights and everything else, paved sidewalks, etc. But you got some bushes, you got some obstructions, etc. Or you've got an open dark field, okay? That you could go that way, right? Again, campus is so much better. To give me actual concrete <laughs> examples of routes, okay? Who says take the lighted path? You got to go one way or the other. Who says who wants to take the contrarian argument and take the uh, dark field? I got a cell phone. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> there, anybody heard? Has anybody heard the? Um, you know, you have your personal space. You have like your bubble. You, you can protect and defend your bubble. Okay, as a one thing or whatever. And they said you have a personal bubble of twenty feet. That's a big bubble, isn't it? Okay. 
If you don't know where that comes from, that is the tool of rule in law enforcement that basically lethal distance with a knife is 21 feet. You take our fast stress shooting class, you find out how fast that distance can close. Okay? Um, lethal distance with a knife has been proven that someone can get to and kill the officer with a knife before they can draw and get a, a shot off from 21 feet away. They are actually talking about pushing that out to 28 feet. Okay? Um, so uh, that's the TULA rule. So that's where I have no doubt that's where they came up with that number. Okay? All right? So you have two routes. Okay? You have, again, street lights and everything else, but you have parked cars and everything else. Now, let's say you're not even walking on the sidewalk. Let's say you're going to be really proactive in this late, no one's around, so you're going to walk down the middle of the street. All right? So they're farthest away from anything you can possibly be. Okay, so would you say from the end of the street would be say from the, from like this wall to those chairs maybe about middle of the street when about probably about seven eight feet something like that <coughs> everybody give me that okay so I'm walking down the street and someone is in a three point stance behind a car right here okay they start walking. How long does that take? Okay. Okay. Versus a wide open field where you can see them coming for 10 yards. Don't know who it is, but know someone's there. Okay. Again, every situation is rather contextual. Okay. And we need to be a little, uh, hopefully we get a little more critical thinking about it and things like that. Okay. But we're like, you know, go to the light, go to the light. Go, we're like bugs. Right. That, you know, we have to, you know. Um, you know that uh, so hopefully we get a little more critical situation wise what's most important you know here you know is it space is it whatever etc okay so you know again hopefully we get a little more critical thinking and then of course don't be in a bad place you know the, the old adage that you know you know in if you're at a bar at 4 a.m. right um, one of the, actually, this, uh, this Roy Miller book, Scaling Force, has a great chapter on basically, <laughs> it's basically, no one is time to leave, right? At the party, everybody who's hooked up has already left. Everybody who is staying is just mad and looking for trouble. Recognizing when the crowd changed, when the tenor changed, it's time to leave now, right? Those types of things, okay? So... Uh, again, now having said that, there are times where we can't avoid. Um, your job requires you to go to a bad part of town or into a situation that you really don't want to be in, etc. Okay, or you know, or basically trouble finds you, right? And you don't, you know, you're trying to do those things, but I mean, trouble finds you. So then, uh, basically, a subset of that I would consider de-escalation and deterrence. Okay, so there are certain things that maybe we can talk ourselves out of, de-escalate, hey, I'm sorry, you know, uh, you know, I, again, didn't mean in disrespect, or I didn't know that was your seat, or whatever, or, um, you know, hey, man, I didn't know she was your girlfriend, I'm really sorry, what, you know, whatever, okay, those types of things. Maybe we can talk ourselves out of those things. You are not de-escalating yourself out of a sexual assault situation. If you put a sexual predator on a lie detector, and ask them if you rape, did you rape them? They will say no and they will pass the test because in their mind, forcing them to have sex is not rape. I'm not sure what is, okay? And obviously most people and in and, and, and society, that's not the case, right? Now who's heard, anybody heard say, stop it, you're raping me in the middle of the act? Anybody heard that one? Just, you know, yell, stop it, you're raping me. Anybody heard that one? No. Really? Okay. So, Usually a few hands go up or whatever else, okay? Think back about the process. Selected you as a target, talked you up, buy, bought you drinks, isolated you, whatever. Do you think at this moment in time you're going to have meaningful dialogue and dissuade him of his opinion that for sex is not rape? Probably not, okay? So, there is no de-escalation with the rapist. There is possibly the deterrence, though, Okay? Which goes back to what we were talking about here, eye contact. Okay? And, you know, during that approach and evaluation phase, basically you give them the impression that you are a handful. Right? That you, you dialed the wrong number, go someplace else. Right? And because, again, they don't want to get beat up. They don't want to get caught. Everything else. 
right? So we can deter certain situations because if this is a re this is risk reward for the predator, okay? If this is a this is a process pre resource predator. This is risk reward. Make sure you make them think twice about this is too risky. Go someplace else. And again, they're going to go someplace else. Sucks for the next person, but we're deterring the attack. And most often, it's more this than this for most people, okay? in my opinion, okay? in my experience. And that's where, again, the FAST class is so important because it deals with boundary setting and this type of posturing right? that basically is deterrence. Okay? All right. Then, of course, then if that doesn't work, we have the self-defense aspect. Okay? And that's the actual fight. Okay? And... and you know, actually, I meant to say this at the very beginning. I, this is so important that you do this stuff right, and then you don't need this stuff. And this and the other important part of this is that um, there's a lot of things that happen here. All this other stuff happens here, okay? So we don't get a do-over, though. So we have to be so... Uh, careful and to deal with all these other things at this point. I'll, I'll talk about them more in a minute. But before we even get there, you're in a fight. And while our intention is maybe, and, and ladies especially, you have at least in the eyes of the law a lot more grace in the sense that, um, you know, most women don't pick a lot of fights. Um, and so, and you also have like disparity of force on your side which basically says that you're poor, helpless little women and can't possibly defend yourself against <coughs> big, strong men. Obviously, that's crap, but, the eyes, of, but it's, the eyes of the law give you that benefit, so bonus, use it, right? Um, that's, a, that, that's a good thing, okay, um, for, for us that, are, that can do that. Um, but it's a fight and anything can happen, okay? Um, and, you know, we're talking about breaking other people, right? And so there's a lot to that, um, that, and, and if, and, and guys especially, you know, everybody puffs up that, you know, they, they start to do this number and then they, you know, the, the things keep escalating, right? Until they feel like they can't back down again or whatever and the fight, come, you know, and then, and, and everything else. But you're, you know, even, you look at the phenomenon that, most fights, anybody seen this, like two guys in the hallway or whatever, and they're puffing up, and then there's the shove, and then what's the other guy do? Comes back and shoves them, right? Right? So there's these incremental ups of ante, right? And usually, the, and usually in most social fights, okay? Now, I think <coughs> if this is a true predator who's just going to blitz you and take what they want for resources, that's different, right? But most social fights between two guys, then the first punch is this. Boom! I hope that was enough. Please go away. <laughs> you see it? They hit him once, they back off. And what's the other guy got to do? Come back and punch you once. And then it's usually on, on, right? But it's even that next incremental, please be one punch, be enough to do this. Because I really don't want to be here, right? Maybe one punch and now my buddies will pull me off and I can do the fake, hold me back, right? And, and you know, and then not lose face or whatever. And they're both counting on the other guy to eventually back down in this game of chicken. But... We haven't used intelligence at any point in this process, so you think that it's going to happen now, right? Okay? And, you know, again, anything can happen. Most fights, most deaths in fights don't come from the beating. It comes from one guy falling backwards and hitting the back of their head on the corner of a pool table. That's still murder or manslaughter, right? Or hitting the head on the pavement as they fall down, right? Trayvon Martin, I'm not going to get into Trayvon Martin politics or whatever else, but, but you know, there was a big thing. I, I, I promise we're not really going down this road, but it does have a couple of educational points here, okay? Everybody's like, oh, you know, I got a lot of emails and everything else, and he shouldn't have had to have died because he was a black man in a white community and blah, 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 and everything else. Let's make no mistake. The reason he died is because he picked a fight with a guy with a gun. And the guy was willing to use it. That's why he died. Okay? Now we could talk about all, whether that's fair and all those other things. Not going to, but we could. But let's make it abundantly clear. 
He picked a fight with a guy with a gun and he didn't know that. Or he didn't didn't care. That's why he died. That's that's the crap that happens in a fight. Right? You're going into a realm that who the hell knows what's gonna happen is and it should be really damn scary to, for anybody. Because you have no idea. Okay? So anyway. So there's the self-defense set. So then there's the fight. Okay? But as I said, there's a lot of things that we're going to have to deal with after the fact that actually occur here that make this a lot more complicated than what most people assume it's going to be. Okay? <coughs> there's, the, there's the legal side. Okay? Guys, you pick into, get in a fight. It is not like in the movies. It's not like Lethal Weapon where the house is destroyed and the good, and, and you know, the good looking girl... Mel Gibson walks, limps out with the good-looking girl, you know, underneath, you know, carrying him out, and the cops pat him on the back as he, they walk in to go get the bit, bad guy from the rubble. That's not how it works, right? Two guys get into a fight, cops show up, you know, you're both bloodied up, you're both going to jail. They'll figure it out in the morning. It's not the job's, it, it, cop's job is to build a case, but... Really, it's the prosecutor. You know that that's their job. Figure out what went wrong. You know who's who's to blame. Whatever. Their job is to keep peace. You're both going to jail, right? They'll figure it out later. And that's if you have more friends to corroborate your side of the story than he has friends corroborating his. Okay, ladies, this is an extreme example, but I'm going to use it because we're going to play it out in some of the other points I'm going to make here in a minute. You're in a self-defense situation with some an acquaintance rape someone. You know, you know, you go back to their place. Things get out of hand. <coughs> you have to gouge an eye to get away. Now, that's an extreme example, and I'll, again, play it out in many different ways, okay? Even if you're found to be, avoid, you know, be in your right from a criminal standpoint, and by the way, that means, for example, with guys, again, let me go back and say that includes things like, um, you know, not getting into a verbal sparring match before, that you have no real culpability in terms of this altercation and things like that that is going to skew whether how, you know, well you were in the, you know, uh, you know, how innocent you are and things like that, okay? Um, you know, there is also this thing called appropriate level of force, okay? Where, uh, you know, again, that's an extreme example, ladies, you gouging an eye, right? Disparity of force, rape, you're probably going to be okay from a criminal standpoint. Can't say for sure, right? But here's just the the practicality of it, what prosecutor wants to be known as the guy who prosecuted a woman for defending herself in a rape, right? So you probably have that going on, okay? But there's a lot of other cases that aren't clear-cut. There's a case in New York where um, uh, you have uh, guys walking down the street, three guys jumped out at him, one had a baseball bat, okay? The guy took the bat from the other the guys and basically then beat them away with him. Here's the problem, okay? When he took the bat in the eyes of the law, the threat was neutralized. When he turned the bat on them, that term is called punishment. At that point, it was no different than one crazed individual had jumped out of the bushes with a bat against three guys walking down the street and started beating them. He went to jail. Now, you could argue that's not very fair, but that's the way it is in the eyes of the law, okay? Depends on the, also depends on the state. State... California, Illinois, duty to retreat even in your own home. Case in California, guy breaks into the guy's house. Basically, the guy retreats, chases him through his house, like from the living room to the kitchen downstairs, in the bedroom or whatever, into the basement. Last room of the house, the homeowner shoots the guy dead. In the state of California, there was a window he could have climbed out of. He had a duty to retreat out that window instead of shooting the guy. I would say that's pretty crazy. I'm glad I don't live in California, okay? But, again, depends on, on the laws of the state. That depends on laws in general, okay? And, again, most of the time it's probably not very fair, okay? But you're going to have to deal with it, okay? And even if you dodge the criminal side, you still have the civil side to deal with, okay? Ladies, you gouge a guy's eye, Okay? They're going to be sitting there, they're going to, the, the, there's going to be the civil side, and it's going to be, you know, things are going great. They had class together. They went to a football game together. They went back, and, you know, they, she's, she was laughing at my jokes. We were getting along, everything else, right? 
she you know, they, she's indiscriminately laughing and everything else, and you know, it's really we're getting along, and and suddenly, you know, she flips out and goes crazy and maims my client. Well, that's crap. That's not how it happened at all, right? But they're going to be. Did you? You know, why'd you go back there? Did you yell for help? Did you communicate beforehand? Did you? You know, yell for help. Did you try to put? Did you do all these other things before you tried? You again tried to kill or maim my client. Okay, not very fair. Not going to be fun. Probably going to be the case though, right? And if, guess what? If you're found to have skipped a step, maybe. Okay. And here's the thing: we're talking about court. We're talking about six months, couple hundred thousand dollars in court costs just to prove you were right all along. Occasionally, I do expert witness testimony, okay, in self-defense trials. I, th there's one in Northern Indiana, and I'm telling you, if if one of one of my martial arts students came to me and said, "This is what happened, and this is what I did," I would have said, "You handled it perfectly." Prosecutor didn't see it that way. When he didn't plead out, they upped the charges to a higher felony count because if you're going to go to court trial, you're going to you know play for you know you're going to play to win. Right, so um, and and if you don't understand, okay, just how complicated this is, right? I was a, a friend of I was a friend of the uh, um, uh, law firm that was representing this guy. So I gave I gave a very deep discount to your typical expert witness, which is like two hundred fifty dollars an hour to five hundred, right? Baseline is two fifty. I gave a good discount, but I got paid for my time to travel up there. Travel, go up there, mileage to northern Indiana to then get deposed by the prosecutor beforehand. Okay? If you, so if you just understand how this racks up real quick, right? Then court reporter, recorder, has to then basically give me a transcript of the deposition and send it to me. She gets paid for her time, I'm sure that's not cheap. To then so then I can read my own deposition to make sure there are no mistakes in it. Because that's now testimony. Because then if I get up there and go, well, you said this before, well, now you're changing your story or whatever else. And I can't change my story from what I said, but if there's a typo and it should have been can instead of cans or something like that, I can clarify that. So then, guess what? I bill for reading what I, the three hours I already talked, okay? Now I read over my own words and I, I bill for that, okay? See how this gets racked up a little bit here, okay? Then... Now, as an expert witness, you have to, the court has to, A, qualify you as a witness, right, and say, yeah, you're, you're helpful to the case. Now, our strategy was, all right, you get qualified as an expert witness, then we help your case. If you don't, if they don't qualify you, then that's our grounds for appeal because you should have helped my, you know, here's an expert that would have said that, you know, what he did was great, right, that would have helped our case, it was disallowed, that's grounds for appeal. I get up there, they take the jury out, they're qualifying me as a witness, asking me questions. I'm like, man, this is going great. I'm getting this guy off right hand in the air. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting this out of the ballpark, right? I get down, I start walking out of the gallery. Judge goes, well, he's clearly an expert in his field. I'm like, all right, bring it on. Let's do this. And he goes, but I don't see how his testimony is relevant to the case. <laughs> what? It's a Vince case. What? Okay. Wasn't allowed to testify. So, okay, there's grounds for appeal. Oh, he ran out of money. There was no appeal. He's rotten in jail. I'm not kidding you. This is scarier than this is for a lot of people. One of the, one of the baddest men I know uh, worked for the Department of Justice, specialized in prison riots, ran the SWAT teams around. He retired, not because of occupational hazard. Not, part, of his, part of his thing is these are all the different things people have tried to stab him with over the years. He's got pictures. Right? <laughs> That doesn't, that doesn't phase him in the least. He was scared to death of this. Retired. Okay? This is scarier than this sometimes. Okay? Again, ladies, in a lot of cases, you're going to have a little more leeway. You have disparity of force. Um, you know, most of you are probably not going to be starting brawls or, or whatever else. Right? So you have a little bit of uh, leeway there compared to guys. Okay? Especially if you do martial arts, when that comes out, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, I can't touch someone. 
right? Because I'm supposed to be able to Jedi not, you know, my hands are registered with the <laughs> FBI, right? And they, not really, but you know, you get the idea. I have to explain not really for most of my classes because they think it's true. But, um, you know, so, you know, it, I'm supposed to like, you know, Jedi mind trick them into not, you know, I'm supposed to be able to like, you know, touch them once and they fall down and paralyzed and that'd be the end of it, right? If I bruise them, I'm probably going, you know, getting sued, right? That, because here's the thing. Do you think that the jury in this trial understands what it's really like in that circumstance? And again, what if they have, I used to say Johnny Cochran, he's dead, I can't, you know, from the O.J. Simpson trial, I don't know who, who you know, who's the lawyer now? Garagos or whatever, who's the top lawyer now, you know, defense lawyer. But you get the idea. What, what if they've got a great lawyer, right? This, this gets kind of crazy, right? Even if you dodge these bullets, then there's a social aspect, okay? Small town, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows everybody. You got guys get into a fight in school, what if you have three classes with them next semester? That's going to be a little awkward, isn't it? Think your car's safe? Get into a fight at a bar in college? You ever going to go back there when he's got like five, for the next month, the guy's just camping out there with ten of his buddies waiting for you, Right? To come back. Ladies, you guys that eye. Okay? Again, he's a nice guy. Difference between nice and good. You have mutual friends. 85% 80, acquaintance rapes with someone you know. You have mutual friends. He's a nice guy. He wouldn't do that. People are taking sides. You wouldn't be known as the gouger in your group. People squint when they talk at talk to you, you know, or whatever. I'm being a little flippant, but you see how this gets complicated. Right? That's just not cool. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, um, you know that you know that you see how this gets complicated, okay? In a in a big way, okay. The part that most people don't fully appreciate is the psychological aspect, okay. <clears throat> there's a there's a great book called On Killing. I don't suppose anybody's read it. Okay. It's required for reading by FBI and everything else. This is the follow-up book called On, Count, On Combat by Dave Grossman. Right? This is more individualized. On Killing is more about more society on a macro level. Um, but that book's pretty good, too. Uh, On Combat's more the individual side of things. Okay? One of the gists in the book is that throughout history, prior to Vietnam, something like 85% of all munitions was fired other than at the enemy. Into the ground up in the air, okay, other than the other side, okay? That's why civil war battles took so long, even though, like, they're for me to that back wall, right? They did munitions tests in Gettysburg. 85, 90% of all rifles were fired one time, okay? They, they missed one time, and then they dropped the ball every other time they reloaded the gun. Because people have an innate resistance to killing or maiming another human being. This is not a bad thing. Okay, at all. Okay, but it is really hard to do that. Okay, and we usually have are traumatized if we do. Psychological casualties on the battlefield far outweigh uh, physical casualties. Now, distance of war, and the fact that now we bomb people from drones makes it like a video game does a lot to uh, uh, improve that for people. Okay, it's not as real. Okay. Um, so they're finding that these drone pilots are suffering PTSD just like infantry. Not as much, though. They're not on top of it, right? It, the farther away you get, the more easier it is to kill. And, okay, here, after the fact, maybe so, but they, at least they're pulling the trigger, which is a little different than it's for me to you and I have to pull the trigger and see you explode, mm -hmm. right? So this is an innate, there, there's innate resistance to doing this, right? So, again, one, Gettysburg, most guns fired one time. Like some guns, like 1% of all guns, the, psycho the psychopaths, right, either good or bad, um, were like something like 15, 16 times, right? Because they, and it just took them all day to pick off the other side, right? That's why the Civil War battles look so long. So, uh, again, we have an innate resistance killing maim and maiming another human being. In World War II, the Marines practiced gouging the eyes out of cats. Because the rationale is you can't do it to a cat, you can't do it to another human being. You might think they can do it to Fluffy? No. Okay. Now, 
from a from a self defense standpoint, there she, right? Hurry. So, from a self defense standpoint, if I was teaching a course, this would be great. You know, he he comes up and attacks me, grabs me some way. Technique number one: reach out, gouge his eyes. Okay. He grabs me some other way. Technique number two: use the other hand, reach out, gouge his eyes. He grabs me from behind. Okay. Turn around, reach out, gouge his eyes. Class over, course over, go home. Okay. Couldn't work really well, thanks. Okay. The problem is, we go to jail, we get sued, right? We'd be socially stigmatized if we did it, or we'd be psychologically traumatized if we did it, but most of us wouldn't, we would freeze up. Okay? And again, that's not a bad thing. Okay? But um, that's just the way it is. Now, um, there was a, at DePaul, there was one person, um, he was an FBI, former, maybe current, an FBI agent at one time came, and I didn't go to the presentation. I think I actually it conflicted with my class, but some sorority had him in and everything else. And I got the you know the debrief, what happened, what he did, or whatever. And he was an FBI agent whose whose daughter was ba basically was abducted by one of the real psychos, and they found her, or at least parts of her, mm. and everything else. And you know, so basically, here's not only a profession, but obviously much more personal. You know, he's highly motivated about the subject matter, right? and I understand that, right? But basically the talk was two hours of the different ways to kill someone with the contents of a common purse. Okay? Now, if that happened to some of those predators, I wouldn't, least, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. And I understand why he would like that to happen. But I would argue, is he really doing those women justice if that's what he's teaching them? Stuff that's going to get send them to jail, Okay. Get them sued, socially traumatized, socially stigmatized, and psychologically traumatized. If they could do it, but probably not, they're going to freeze up. Okay. So, in my course, and, and, and I'm like, what the hell do I? <laughs> you're like, okay, that's great. What the hell do I do with this information, right? And so, in my course, we the big buzzword is is moving forward. Everything, our our self defense strategy on the physical level has to take into account these things. Right? Our techniques have to make sure that they are legally sound and will avoid the psychological trauma and everything else. Okay? But part of it goes back to mindsetting too. And whatever you decide you're going to do, right? more importantly, is that you've mentally prepared and that you understand what you're going to do. You understand glitches. Okay? So um, this is a, uh, Rory Miller. He's another one of the books I recommend over there. He, has, he talks about glitches. And... Again, we're talking about doing bad things <coughs> to another person. Maybe deservedly. All right, so let me give you an example, okay? You have the, let's say you're a good enough shot, and you have the means to shoot someone, okay? You're walking, there is a big, it's, it's middle of the night, there's this big hulking figure dressed in black, dragging a club. <laughs> Hold on. And he's for me that door, right? Pitch black, big menacing guy, tell him to stop. He keeps just walking towards you, dragging the club. R raise your hand and say, yeah, I could shoot that guy. <laughs> no one here says they could shoot him? It's dark. Okay. <laughs> you couldn't bring yourself to shoot him? Yeah. Well, they're within, they're, hey, they're within lethal distance. If you don't shoot them now, they can kill you. You or them, I shoot them. Okay. What if it's a 14-year-old man-child with autism? No. That's a real case, by the way. Cop shot him because he hadn't forced the guy. Big menacing guy dragging a club down the street. Came up, stopped right there. Guy kept walking towards him. Absolutely should have shot him. Right. Turns out it didn't turn into Ferguson, but there was big protests and everything else. You expect to happen dark. He's in lethal distance with that thing. Okay? You don't know that until after the fact. Right? 14 year old man child. What if it's a woman? Hey, sometimes women can be me. Well, again, they, <laughs> well, they have a, you know, they, can, can a woman stab you? Mm -hmm. Slice your throat? Uh -huh. Absolutely. They're within lethal distance. Okay? <laughs> what if it's a woman with small children nearby? Can you shoot them with your mom watching? Shoot their mom with the kids watching? 
Well, if it's, what if they're elderly? And I presume, like, you know, still able to buy, like, if they've got, like, you know, like this, you know, just, just be able to run away from someone that I can You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Again, what if they're mentally handicapped? It would be very hard to do if you knew it. But how do you they know can still that kill you? But how do you know that they're intending you harm? Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's the whole thing on all of these, isn't it? How do you know that? Um, if they're approaching you with a knife and they're within distance that they can kill you. Well, a knife, but I thought you said like they're dragging something. Well, I, I changed it to a knife. Oh. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, so we're yeah. going to say intent. Yeah, let's say intent. Yeah, yeah, say intent's all right. there. Okay. What if it's, uh, what if there's a video camera? Someone's recording the conflict. That's the one that actually, I'm like, yep, shoot him, yep, shoot him, yep, shoot him, yep, shoot him, yep, shoot him. Oh, right? A video camera's the one that got me, right? Because, you know, but here, here's the thing. All those cases, they can kill you. If you have a mental hang-up on it, okay, that those are things that we need to work. That's the mind setting that I'm talking about. We need to work those things out a little bit. And again, you're talking about well, good gosh, how many scenarios you're going to go through in your mind? And that's pretty paradigm. But again, those are things we have to work out. Can you shoot someone? Can you do this? Are you willing to use this much force? What are you willing to do? Because if you have to stop and think about it at that time, if you haven't made those decisions beforehand, it's too late. Yeah, can you legally do it and get away with it? All those are lethal threat, yes. Can't, don't, don't Assuming the tent is there. Well, Assuming, right, yeah. What do you mean you only need a threat with a threat? Just because he's carrying a knife, you don't know that he's intended to, to threatenly harm you. If he's walking towards you with a knife and you're like, drop the knife and he doesn't drop the knife, I'm shooting him. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Verbal yes, no, yeah. Use. No, there's other things that have to play out. But I'm just saying, yeah, for, for the sake of, yeah. The, Assuming that intent, opportunity, and means are all there, the legal justification for you to defend yourself, okay? And you did everything you could, right, or whatever. But yeah, they're, they're, but then again, there's awfully fast judgment calls, right? But could, but again, those certain, you have to mentally pre go through these processes, right? Someone jumps in front of your car to stop you. Can you run them over? Well, okay. you better. Well, again, you know, just on a physical level, just on a physical level, psychological level, right? Because <coughs> if you, again, if you have to sit there and have this moral debate in your head at that moment, it is too late. Okay? We have to decide. Um, someone comes in your house, right? Someone goes after your kid. That's go time. Right, for me, that's go time. There's no more discussion, right? The minute they start to reach for my kid, it's on, right? There is no more de-escalation there, okay? Someone's in my house, it's go time right away. Don't even ask. Maybe that's most, that may or may not be the most legally sound decision to make. So make it on your own. I'm just saying, you have to come up with those, you know, mental rehearsal. You have to come up with, you know, those decisions beforehand so that we don't freeze okay in the time that that's psychological that's the mind setting that's the mental rehearsal that this is so important for okay so we have all those aspects that we need to take into account okay <clears throat> all right so against this backdrop and this back backdrop the last section that I want to talk about today kind of are some of the myths and misconceptions that are out there. And this is a little more audience participation. Again, I have my, um, my uh, list of favorites or whatever, but this is where, again, what have you been told for personal safety? Now, let's keep it on just more strategy, not like uh, technique, like kick them in the groin and run, right? So, you know, again, in, in my, this isn't about a, a technique class, so we're not going to be doing that. And, and besides, it's kind of hard to argue with that anyway. Um, but you know, more things like, uh, what have you, you know, what have you been told or anything like that? I'll give you one for example. And, and this is the interesting part is this is like fads, like anything else. Has anybody heard telling you have AIDS? Someone's raping you telling me you have AIDS? No. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't mean to date you. Okay. 
when I started teaching my classes 18 years ago, almost every person raised their hand. Now maybe one out of 40 girls will raise their hand in my, in my, in my college class. They're like, what? Who, who does that? Here's the thing. Okay, but here, these are fads, right? This is the same. Because back then, AIDS was, I'm not saying AIDS is not a big deal anymore. I mean, it obviously is, but it was scary. Literally, front page. I remember in high school, literally, every day in the newspaper, there's a front page article on AIDS or AIDS research, CD4, T cells, whatever else. You know, how big is it going to get? How's it spreading? No one knew what was going on. It, it was Ebola times 10. Right, and you know that was that was the big scary bugaboo, right? And so, yeah, everybody's like, "Tell me how they felt scared the shit out," right? So um, that that was that was the thing. Now it's not. I'm not saying it's not a big deal, but it's out of the news cycle, right? So now you have to tell them you have Ebola or swine flu or something <laughs> like that. I guess I don't know, right? But again, it, it was very it was a fad, right? Okay. And here's the other thing, is take into account that the predator understand, they, they hear a lot of the same type of stuff, they know, and they're like, I know they're going to tell me, you know, Stephen Thompson's like, I know they're going to tell me they have AIDS and I don't believe them. Right? Stephen Thompson said the predator said that, not Stephen Thompson, but you get the idea, right? Okay? So, you know, again, there's that too, okay? So, but anyway, strategies like that, okay? Any? You sorry to raise your hand? No. No. Morgan? I've been told yell fire. That's a great one. Okay. Who's heard yell fire? Nobody wants to see rape, but they'll love to see a fire. The, and if you're not familiar with the, the concept, okay, rape is personal and touchy and no one wants to get involved in that. Okay. Fire, there are studies, there are studies done that people, if, you know, hide behind a bush and yell fire, fire, people are willing to come running. Okay. I don't, I don't really know the methodology. I don't think they're behind a bush, but you know what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> If you say rape, everybody's like, oh, I don't know, you know, what's, yeah, right? Um, and unfortunately, there are a couple of bad egg examples that um, there was one not too long ago in an alleyway, if you know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to rehash it if you don't, um, that give the other cases, uh, they make it, they muddy it, right, and, and, um, Again, they, they create it uh, where it should be more black and white than what it is. They gray it, and, then, and that's unfortunate. Um, but, for well, gray it for a lot of people, I should say. Um, but yeah, so that's the idea. Okay, Here's, here's the problem with that. And so, as you see, uh, um, I like to put things in filing cabinets. I kind of I have my kind of more genres of, of advice. Okay? So... This, is, this genre is what I call the academic world. Uh, you know, this is the, the problem with any research is whether it has external validity, right? And so whether what you do in the lab approaches the real life, okay? Since you said it, Morgan, come up here. Thanks for volunteering. You're welcome. Okay? So you're walking down the street. You tell me when you have to yell fire. <laughs> well, you yell fire when you need to yell fire. We're walking down the street. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you have the time? It's about... I don't have... Well, it's on fire! <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so... His hand touched my So... You start screaming. What, are the, what do you think the bad guy's going to do? Shut the sound off, isn't he? Isn't he? And what if he hits? And, and he might not be so nice when he presses mute, right? I'm not saying I'm not saying don't yell. Absolutely yell, because again, it's one of those variables, <coughs> right? That makes this plan go to crap, right? And it it might be enough to make him skittish, and this is not going, and it goes back to that you are not the easy victim they thought you were, etc. Okay, all right, but. Um, you know, that, that's a great study, but it doesn't take into account one really important thing. There's a bad guy involved, right? And until we understand the bad guy, there's a lot of, there's a lot of advice out there that really doesn't transfer over.
Okay. Yeah, there are studies that back that up, right? But yeah, I'm not saying don't yell, but if that's what I'm relying on, not not going to be the case. What else? Okay, a little gross, but I've heard that you that if you can like pee or move. goes along the line. Thank you. And again, that <laughs> one is a little more out of vogue. <laughs> um, <laughs> That was a nice way of saying that we're old, right? <laughs> okay. Um, that one is a little more out of vogue, but I get a few hands raised on that one usually. Um, pee on yourself, vomit. Goes, it's still really telling you have AIDS or swine flu or whatever. I still put it in the same group, okay? Um, fake a seizure, okay? That's a good one. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> I want to see you fake a seizure. Get on the floor right now. I want to see you say fake a seizure. Okay, all right. Here's the thing on all these, okay? One goes back to predator, it assumes the predator hasn't anticipated some of these things, and they have, okay? And more importantly, it assumes the predator gives a damn, okay? And so my genre on this is what I call there is a lot of good person to good person advice, okay? If I were with a woman and she started to have a seizure, oh my gosh, are you okay? Right? Problem is, not a rapist. Okay? This is overly crass, but it's important that you understand the difference. Okay? Predator, have a seizure? Huh, it'll be easier when she's limp afterwards. We're not talking about good people here. Right? And until we understand the predator mindset, then, again, there's a lot of good person to good person advice. Tell them you're raping me. Sir, say, 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 stop it, you're raping me. Anybody heard humanize yourself? Start talking about your sisters, or if you, you know, would you do this to your mother, or what, you know, weird, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> else. But basically, the idea is to get you to see, see you as a human, uh, uh, another human being instead of just an object to be dominated, right? Because, again, when... Predators don't see women as equal, blah, 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 whatever, okay? So um, that's the, the idea or whatever else. We already talked about you're not going to have meaningful dialogue and dissuade them of opinion at this point, okay? But the idea is, you know, and, and so um, I'll come back to this point. There's a, um, there's a lot, again, there's a lot, of, uh, there's a lot of good person to good person advice. There's, um, you know, if I, again, if I was with a woman, she said, stop it, you're raping me, right? Oh my gosh, hold on. I thought we were, you know, I thought, yeah, you know, whatever, okay? Not a rapist. You're not dissuading a rapist of his opinion at this point, okay? Um, there's a program on campuses, and it's called He Said, She Said, or whatever else. Um, and, and the idea is that... Um, they do a little role play. They go two guy, guy and a girl. They go to a party. They go back to his place. Whatever else stuff happens. Obviously, they don't show too much. I don't think. But you know, anyway. And then you know, next morning they get up and and you know, she goes home. She slinks out and and you know, uh, of the room or the be, you know the bedroom and you know goes home and like I think I was raped. You think, right? And then they go back, and then, then it's audience participation. Well, what did she do wrong, and what did he do right, and, you know, this and that and everything else. And, you know, could we have communicated better at the beginning? And if, this had, and if we'd all just, you know, talked it out a little bit better and sung a little more kumbaya, then everything would have been okay, right? And this never would have happened. And we just need to understand each other and everything else. And that might work in about 2% of the cases because 2% of rapes are what they call state rapes. The guy is not a rapist, but usually alcohol, drugs, or other circumstances, there's a rape that happens, but technically the guy is not a rape. 2% of the time. 98% of the time is a certifiable psychopath's rapist who doesn't give a crap what you want and is going to take what he wants. That isn't as touchy-feely of a presentation. People don't leave all laughing and positive. And what a good talk. Might not be as politically correct. Those of you who know me know that that's never been a concern of mine. Right? That's 98% real world, though. Okay? And until we acknowledge the fact that that's the person that we are dealing with, then 
you know, then it's it's pretty worthless otherwise. Okay, and again, it's not as touchy feely. There's a lot of it, you know, telling me rape. Oh, that's powerful. I mean, that gets you right here. Yeah, it cuts good people to the core, right? Oh, that's really powerful. Some of you are like, oh wow, that's powerful, right? Exactly. If you're a rape, but again, not a rapist. Okay, there's a lot of advice out there, and again, moving forward, you have to ask yourself. Just because it says it, it sounds good to me, is it going to sound good for the bad guy? Right? There's a lot of good person and good person advice out there. Okay? All right, next one. You're hitting some good ones. You're better than my college classes. The main classes. thing would be try to avoid a situation, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it goes back. Look, okay, all this stuff, isn't it a hell of a lot easier to deal with everything up here? Mm -hmm. Right? And goes back to eye contact and all those other things? Right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Right? Yeah. What else? Any others? I'm trying to figure out which my best set is to use. <laughs> yeah. Anybody seen this one? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now, what is this? Okay, so what, is, what are you going to do with this? Okay, now look. Okay, so hold on. Now, if this is keep your hand in your car, keep your keep your keys in your hand so you can get in your door easy and, you know, without fumbling and everything, i hard to argue with that or whatever else, right? You know, there's a, there's a lot of it, uh, you know, you know, instead of the bottom of your purse or whatever else. <laughs> Right and things like that. I tell. I mean, you know, my keys. Good gosh, right? I never can't keep track of them, and I have to fish through my purse all the time and uh, everything else. So, um, so you know, but that's not what this says, is it? What are you going to do with this? Well, okay. Now, if you're going to take one of these and put it here, and put it here, or put it here, then yeah, that'll work. But guess where we are? We're back to here, aren't we? Okay. Right, which if you have to, okay, maybe if you can, and you're willing to live with it, okay. But that's not really what this says to me. What does this say to me? Right? Yeah, we're we're going to do that. What's that going to do to them? Bad. It's going to piss them off, right? And if you're lucky, it's going to scratch them enough they bleed. Now they're bleeding on you. Is that something we want? Okay. Now, okay, so I will use this to segue into weapons in general, okay? Segue, S-E-G-U-E, segue. Okay, so anyway, so uh, weapons in general, okay? Anybody carry pepper spray? Mace? Where is it? I can have it with me. Okay. So, uh, so, usually, uh, that's fine, that's fine. So, um, you know, usually a couple people raise their hand, and I'm like, you know, where is it? It's like in the bottom of my purse or whatever else. If your purse is like purses I know, or, or again, even my purse, right? Legal distance with a knife is tool or world, 21 feet. You're, you know, you're walking down the street, you know, trying to get to that, right? Not very, right? Have you sprayed your pepper spray before? Okay. So we haven't practiced with it. Okay. You need to be able to practice any weapon that we're talking about. Whatever weapon we decide to use. Okay, if we're going to use any type of weapon and or, you know, device, implement, whatever you want to call it, okay? You've got to be willing to, you got to be, so there, there's a lot of factors with, when it comes to that. Okay, again, have you used it? Do you know, if you, you know, again, take off lid, right? Point to the other, you know, the bad guy. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, i got to turn this around. Hold on, right? So you don't spray yourself in the face, right? If you're not comfortable doing, I mean, you know, if you're not done that, Right? Anybody, and has anybody been in a room or had spray? Sprayed? It'll clear a room, won't it? Well, it was a gas chamber. So like yeah, right? So, <laughs> right? It'll clear a room. Then we okay? let it sleep. You know, it, it, well, okay, having said that, it is still, well, I, I'm, I'm bouncing around, but we'll come back to the efficiency part, too. Right? Most people will clear a room, but again, let's say I've got my finger on the trigger. Right? Now, again, I'm walking down the street in the middle of the road, parked car, three-point stance. I've got my finger on the trigger. Now, assuming I'm not, like, pying off corners, right, <laughs> as I come around, 
right, to, to check and everything else, okay? I'm walking down the street, they blitz me. How much time do I have? Shit. Do I get a shot off? No. Maybe. Where are they? On you. Tackling me. Now we're both rolling around on the ground with the added, and it's who can fight with the added pain tolerance of pepper spray. Okay. Yeah, and, and well, all weapons, we have to worry about the fact, can it be used against you or can it backfire? Okay? Um, and you stun guns, okay? If you haven't practiced and you're not, I, I'd be willing to bet you I'd probably have an over 50% <coughs> success rate of taking a stun gun and using it on a woman, right? Because I've done a lot of martial arts. I, kind of know how to block and fend and stuff like that. I'd be willing to bet you I could probably take it over half the time and, and paralyze them with it. You might have thought that that could possibly happen, right? Um, you know, again, guns, knives there. Not only, just and again, now those are not lethal, but knives. Some guys all the time, like, I carry a knife. I carry a folder too, right? But, you know, if some, some guys are like, well, I just, I got a knife, I'll, carry, I'll pull that out, uh-huh. You realize when you pull that out, then that's now a lethal threat on me. I am legally justified to kill you when you pull that out. You want to take it there? Right? So depending on the weapon, again, lethal versus non-lethal or whatever, now we're up in the skates. Now things can really go back the wrong way. and Things can really backfire on us. Okay? To the question of efficiency also. Okay? Scaling force, Roy Miller talks about one of his prerequisites for being on one of his tag teams as they sprayed him down with pepper spray, he still had to run across the room, fight a guy, get him down, frisk him, and check him for weapons while being sprayed. Because you have to be able to fight without pain tolerance. He talks about, you know, he's got, you know, their, their guys, he's, he had a guy that literally in prison took the foam off his eyes and started eating it. Okay? Now that is the exception to the rule, okay? But there are some bad dudes there out there, okay? And, um, you know, you also have, you have different, you know how strong yours is? Okay? Uh, it's, I, one, of my, one of my TAs, one of my martial arts students was a cop at IU, um, and I don't know what their strength is. Uh, I don't know what their, uh, pepper spray is me measured in OC units, basically the concentration of, of pepper uh, in it. Right? It's measured in, in OC units. Okay? Um, I don't know what their concentration was, but she's like, it didn't really hurt, it just pissed me off. I came out swinging. Right? She now is a cop in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and she had to go through the training again in the new department. They use a higher concentration. Right? And she's like, what the hell is this? Right? It's completely <laughs> different than what they use at IU or whatever else. And she's like, oh, that is awful. Right? But before, she's like, pepper spray stuff. I don't know what the concentration difference was, it was but it's got to be good enough. Get uh, Mine is 5.3 million. I think I use is like in the hundreds of thousands. Mine is 5.3 million. Okay, It's Fox brand. Sportsman's Guide has it pretty cheap. It's good stuff. Okay, um, I read it. What do you mean by that 5.3 parts per million? When did you get pepper spray? Shut up. So, <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, or actually, I don't know if it's parts per million. It's just million units per whatever. Capsaicin. Yeah, a, yeah. It's, uh, OC and capsaicin is what it is. I think it's not parts per million. I think it's just units per whatever they measure it in. I'm not exactly sure how they measure it. Yeah. It better stop a bear. Get the stuff you spray on bears. Right? My dad at his work, they had a person try to rob their secretary, and the secretary now has bear spray. Yeah, get the stuff that'll stop a bear. Right? If it's going to work, it needs, if you're going to get it, get it. That's good. I mean, go big. Okay? If you're going to get it, oh, he's got, she's got the got extinguisher. The yeah, okay. That's a little different than the hand guys. Okay? <laughs> now, so, so uh, <laughs> you've got the grenade ones, too, that you press the pin and just throw it. It's more like police, too, but that's another story. So, anyway. Now, so, again, you have to be able to use it. Okay? You have to be able to deploy the weapon. Can you get to the gun? Can you shoot? Can you hit somebody with it? Right? If... Um, anybody seen the little Kubaton keychains? You might know what I'm talking about. They're little these little self-defense. They got a couple prongs with them. I'm not sure how you're supposed to 
<laughs> you know, do that. You can learn. There are books. There are videos. There are ways you can learn. But for pra for all practical purposes, most people would probably be better served just throwing the thing on the ground and using their hands more instinctively, right? Because unless you're going to spend hours getting good with this little thing, probably better just throw it on the ground, right? Can you use it? Can it backfire on you? The legalities of using it. Okay. There's a lot of issues when dealing with weapons. The one device I do like, anybody seen the noise grenades? I call them noise grenades. You know what I'm talking about? They're little alarms. You pull a pin and just makes off this obnoxiously loud siren noise. Okay? Highly recommend those because it's all upside, no downside. Pull the pin, throw it on the ground. Okay? They can't shut it off. Okay? It's definitely messing with the plan over here. Okay? But it can be used against you. Okay? Your hands are still free to keep from getting pulled into the van or whatever, right? And things like that, okay? Um, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of other, uh, again, it, can't, it has no backfiring or whatever. It can't be really be backfired. I highly recommend them. Uh, some, some people have told me, though, some, depending on the one, um, sometimes the pin works its way out. So, like, you know, it's like in the middle of class, suddenly it's going off or whatever or else that's a bit of a problem or whatever. But I do recommend, I do like those. Safety. Now, I don't mind, and, and pepper spray is not a bad thing. I don't, I, I would, rec you can wear, you can use pepper spray. I like pepper spray, even if you decide not to use it, I like it from the deterrent standpoint, okay? But for it to be a deterrent, what does the bad guy have to be able to do? See it, okay? And so all the pepper spray canisters are black or forest green and fit in the palm of your hand, and this marker is actually pretty darn spot on, is it not? Okay, right? And so, um, you know, you know again, they fit discreetly in the side, in the hand, and everything else. They need to be a foot long and orange, right? They need to scream, I'm packing, right? So the predator is then going to, you know, again, he's, he's you know, picking up change or whatever behind the car over here. He sees it. I don't feel like getting sprayed today. I'll let her go. I'll choose the next one, right? But again, can't be jumping around corners like, you know, this, but at the same time, if they don't know you have it, it's not a deterrent, okay? I do recommend it from a deterrent standpoint, even if you know how to use it or not, okay? But again, if you decide to use it, other things. But again, you got, they're, they're like this. Anybody seen the jogging weight pepper spray? You know what I'm talking about? They're, they're little, they're like jogging weights with a canister, so you're, you're running, you got your hands on the trigger. <laughs> right, as you're running for. It's great, but there's no deterrent value, right? There's, there's cell phone pepper spray. It's a fake cell phone. And it's got press button, pepper spray comes out. You might have seen that one. I'm not really sure how you actually deploy this one. Hold on, let me make a phone call first. Aha! Right? I don't get it. Right? Anybody seen the lipstick knife? Yeah, I've seen that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a, it's a little knife and a lipstick canister where you, you know, do what it, you know, and make the, and a little blade comes out. It is actually specifically outlawed in the California Penal Code. I don't know why I know that, but I do. But anyway, so, but again, deployment. Hold on, let me freshen up first. Aha! Again, I don't understand how you're really going to deploy to those. There are lots of gadgets out there that prey on insecurity and, and everything else, right? But again, there's some serious questions we have to ask and also need to take into account time, tour rule, bad guy, lots of things, okay, when we turn into some of those, some of those issues, okay? Uh, and things like that. So that's my that's my take on weapons in general. Okay. Uh, again, there's a lot of gadgets out there, but hopefully, you know, we can go. Okay, can, does that really make sense? Right? Can I? Does, you know, is that really practical? Right? Or is it sound in these levels? Okay. All right. What else? It doesn't really. It's not the same thing, though. Like if somebody's wanting your money. Instead of giving it to him, you throw it out to the side. Um, yeah. See, throwing it to the side, I think, just piss him off. But here, I will say this. Um, my opinion is drop it and run. Okay? Um, and it goes back, and, and let me go back and say this, and by the way, it is about 11 o'clock, so if you have someplace else to be, but I honestly only have a few more. Um, big ones, um, and genres, and then again, if you have other questions or whatever. Um, but if you need to leave, it is not a lot of it. Um, my advice is this. Drop it and run. 
Okay. And has any everybody knows don't go to crime scene B. You know what I mean by that? Okay. Someone says get in the car or come with me. Don't go with them. You are 99.9% .9 dead if you go anywhere else with them. Okay. Because if they want you isolated away from everybody, that is not good for you. Okay. So um, you're better off taking, even if they have a gun, right? You're better off running and hoping that they're not willing to shoot in a more populated area or they just miss. <coughs> or even if they hit you, it's probably going to be non lethal. Okay. Modern medicine is really good at saving people from gunshot wounds now. It takes a lot. Okay. As long as you have the survivor mindset and go, oh, shit, I'm shot. I'm going to die now. Right? As long as you believe you're going to survive, it's amazing what people can survive now. Okay? And again, some of our fast courses really hit on that fact you know, with the, with the weapons and stuff like that. Um, the survivor mindset, that's a very important part of what we do. But you're better off just running. You're better off, you know, again, taking your chances there. I said that to come back to this one. Drop, if they just want your wallet and they're just after an easy score, you take off running while well, they got your wallet, chasing, them, chasing after you is probably a hassle. If they are going to shoot you or stab you or chase after you or whatever, they probably were going to anyway. And you might as well have a head start. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm of the opinion, drop it and run. And, you know, like I said, get the head start. Um, if they're going to shoot you, they, are, they were going to anyway. Uh, and if they weren't, then nothing different than if you'd stayed around. Okay? So I'm of that opinion. I don't care about where you throw it, but I, I do. Uh, that is my opinion on that. Anything else? Oh, man. Yes. Uh, what about a whistle? Right. Um, I like the grenade better because, quite honestly, when you're under duress and adrenalized, I am not confident you can use it. I don't know if you would have the fine motor skill or the wherewithal to remember to do it. Okay. Um, if you could, it's again, it's like the noise, all, all upside, no downside. So that's a, a, a secondary thing. But as you're trying to blow on it and fight and everything else, right, throw it on the ground, it's going off, you got your hands free, you can be screaming, you can be yelling, you can be breathing, and everything else for the other. It's, it's a distant second, and again, I, I question deployment, um, but it's in the same lines. Again, it's, it's more up, again, there is no downside to it. The question is whether you can use it or not. Um, who's heard talk, uh, act like you're talking on your cell phone? Anybody heard that one? Okay. Um, this one, I got a couple other genres real quick, okay? Um, there's a case, it's been probably three, four years ago now, maybe even longer, where there was a girl in North Dakota disappeared, and the last thing they saw her doing was what? Talking on her cell phone. Do we typically associate people talking on the cell phone as being aware of their surroundings, all right? Typically not, okay? Who are you on the phone to? Let's say you're talking to the police. What's the response time? On campus at IU, it's three to five minutes, and that's damn good. Okay? Are you still going to be there in three minutes? No. You're still not going to be there in three minutes. Unless you're going to be like, next person is five foot ten, wearing a black Adidas short, khaki shorts, guys, glasses, right? You know what? Right? I mean, unless you're going to try and positively identify everybody that you walk by or whatever. Okay? Um, but I've heard, tell, act like you're on the phone to somebody or whatever. Now, no one tell people your route when you're going to get there. So you know if you're if you dis you know or whatever when to expect you and all that. Then that that's common sense. That's just good smart stuff. Not going to knock any of that, right? But you know, again, I was uh, I don't we don't typically associate people talking. I would argue that that would get you selected as a predator as a target, right? Because I'm like I can walk up and be right beside them, right? And they won't even know because they're oblivious. They're on their phone, right? You know, you bump into people or, you know, walk into traffic or whatever else with phones all the time. People do it all the time. I'm like, they're not going to even know that, um, you know, I'm there, okay? I was uh, one of my martial arts instructors in Boston. I went in February. There's like an absolute blister nor e blizzard nor'easter coming. And so I'm in the sub. I'm meeting friends in Chinatown. And I'm coming up out of the subway, and so I'm, I'm waiting for bars. I got my phone <coughs> out, and I'm walking up, and because I don't want to wander through the streets and you know 
a, a blizzard. So I'm, I'm waiting to get, walk up the, the, the platform and I'm trying to, I'm underground, so I'm waiting for bars, right? And so at the top, there are three guys just loitering, and you know, they're out of the wind, out of the snow, so just hanging out, right? As I'm walking up, out of the corner of my eye, I see the, the main guy sit there and go, and tap the other two guys like, hey, this is it. And then they span out to surround me. Okay, and they go take their positions, one over here, one over here. Crap, get your head up, get your phone out, get out of your phone, head up, eye contact, how you doing? They let me go by, right? I'm very certain that if I kept my nose in my phone, that was gonna end very differently, okay? So again, I would argue that that does not uh, get us, help us. I had one girl make a very astute comment one time. She goes, but I feel better when there's someone on the other line, when I'm talking to my mom. Okay? And I got to thinking about that, and that's probably pretty accurate. So there really is another genre out there in what I call comfort advice. Okay? There's stuff out there that really we doesn't help us, might actually hurt us, but it makes us feel better. Talking on our phone. Okay? Um, IU is about to want to see one of the greatest spectacles in nature, okay? It is the freshman migrations, okay? <laughs> 80 to 100 girls, are like three dorm floors at a time, will migrate to the, to the party houses in mass, right? <laughs> Across the street, 50 to 80 of them at a time. Right? One of the mass migrations, like wildebeest. Right? It's amazing. Right? Okay? And heaven forbid if you're at a light when they start to cross. Right? Okay? Now, maybe not to that extreme, but you ever been in a group of, of, of chatting, you know, there's a bunch of you in a group, there's like five of you are all out talking and whatever else, and suddenly the group gets kind of quiet because suddenly there's like someone and they're just trying to weave through your obnoxious group. Right? And, and, some of you guys are taking that way too personally. I'm just saying, right? So, um, you know, you're in, and everybody kind of suddenly realizes who is this person and how did they get there? You know what I'm talking about? And there's that awkward silence, and then they like cut through, and you keep walking, and then the chatter starts building back up. Everybody's like, okay, it's okay, right? So, I'm not going to knock the buddy system, right? And leave with a person, have a friend, and don't leave. With, I mean, absolutely, that's important, right? But there's also those group settings where everybody feels safe because they think they're in the group and everybody else thinks that everybody else is watching and no one is paying attention, right? And the, group, the guy gets in the middle of the group and everybody's like, right? You know what I'm talking about? Someone has to pay attention, right? But there's that comfort of being in the group that everything's okay, right? It may or may not be the case. Another trip in Boston. This time I'm back. I love Boston, but... I got stories from Boston. Another time I was in Boston, in Back Bay, and there was uh, 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 my wife and friend and his wife and a couple of groups or whatever. We left the kids at home. And so we were, we were Back Bay's like shops, boutiques, whatever else. And I'm walking, and this guy's just loitering, hanging out, and kind of looking kind of like he has no place to be. And as soon as we walk by, he kind of fills in behind us. Hmm. That could be nothing. Could be something, could be nothing, I don't know. Let's find out. So I turn in my stuff in the next window I see to see, you know, to look in. And it was like some like macrame bikini thing or whatever else, right? And I'm like, and I'm like, they're like, what are you looking at? And I'm like, oh, I cut it out of the corner of my eye. I thought it was something else. And they're like, well, what did you think it was? Nothing, all right? You know, like, seriously, what did you look at? I'm like, nothing, all right? You know, but basically, so he goes and finds something another couple of windows up to look at. So then when we started walking again, he fell back in line behind us again. Okay, right? So I turn around, I'm walking, and I'm talking to the group. You know, there's five, six, seven. I'm like, okay, where do you want to eat? Hard Rock's over here. There's a Thai place over here. I'm walking backwards. I'm talking to the group, but he and I are making eye contact, and we're having dialogue, right? I know what's up. You dial the wrong number, go someplace else. We walk around the corner, and he's still walking backwards, talking to the group. He smirks and goes straight, okay? Someone in the group has to be paying attention. Okay, I'm the paranoid one, so you're usually pretty new in the yard with me. You're probably going to let that happen to me, right? Leave that to me. But you get the idea, okay? So there's a lot of this stuff out there that's comfort advice that, oh, that sound, it feels reassuring or sounds reassuring, but is it really helping? Okay? 
All right, let me get my last major one out, and then I'll let you go. If you have any other questions, I'm, I'm happy to stay a little bit longer, okay? Um, and this one's a little flippant, but uh, um, anybody heard Trust Your Instincts? Oh, sure. Okay, now, two parts to that, okay? Better safe than sorry, something doesn't feel right. We're here, absolutely. This is one of the most seminal books in the field. If you have not read this, this is really reading 101. Okay, um, if there was a textbook for my courses, it would probably be this one. Okay, Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBecker. We reference it in the fast class. Some of what we do in the fast classes is based off of that. Okay, um, and by the way, this is the one for children protecting the gift. And if you're a parent, this should be required reading. Okay, um, so uh, anyway, so the Gift of Fear talks all about intuition and what intuition really is and, and why we should trust it and things like that. It's a fascinating book, okay? So I'm not knocking that part at all. But there's also another type of trust your instincts, and I'm being a little flippant for the ladies. I'm being a little sarcastic, but it, it's important to understand the point. We've also heard it, and it's usually couched in the fight-or-flight response where we are all, um, you know, uh, Xena warrior princess inside, uh, that's been oppressed by thousands of years by men, and we get touched in, in touch with that animal instinct inside ourselves. And you know, we are women. Hear us roar. Let that you know get in touch with that animal instinct, and you're really strong. And you know that you know what I'm talking about, right? You know, you've kind of heard it, and it's usually couched in the fight or flight response. Get in touch with that. In adrenaline, fear, adrenaline, stress training. Uh, absolutely, fear is uh, the adrenaline is a very important aspect of, of our, our self-defense, understanding how that works, okay? So that's absolutely huge. But, okay, fight or flight is great if you're attacked by a dog. Because fight or flight is an interspecies interaction. When we're talking about intraspecies interaction, human-to-human -human interaction, there are two other major dynamics at play. <coughs> Think about your animal planet, okay? Two animals button heads. They don't kill each other off. It's counterintuitive to, you know, survival of the species if they, you know, kill each other off. Piranhas, when they fight for dominance, flip each other with their tails. Okay? Right? So, uh, when we're talking about interspecies interactions, or intraspecies interaction, we're talking about two other things. Posture and submission. Strut your tail feathers, you know, sing your song, whatever else. Or, again, butt heads. One animal lowers the head, tucks its tail, submits. Okay? What are we talking about? Right? We're talking about posturing. Okay? Or the alternative is submission. Okay? That's, that's what we, we have to talk about. Okay? So, if someone is punching you in the face, and you're yelling fire or whatever... And they're punching you in the face and tell you and tell and, and saying it stop if it, you know is your instinct to keep screaming? Well, not really. Someone pulls a gun and says get in the car. Is your instinct to run the other way? And again, absolutely run the other way. Do not get in the car. Is your instinct to 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 no? Your instinct is manage the pain, manage the threat at the moment. Some of what we have to do is actually kind of anti instinctual, unless we kind of mentally rewire things. That's where the mindset is so important. We have to think through these things. I'm not getting in that car. I'm running. Right? Because our instincts can fool us sometimes. Right? When we're talking about posture and submission. Okay? Some of what we do, and again, the whole point of my class is then to re do those rewiring. It assumes that you're willing to fight back. It's assumed that you decide that you're willing to fight, you, that you're worth fighting for, and you're going to fight until 10 seconds after you're dead. Okay? It assumes that you fear the ramifications of, you know, all the, you know, the, living with all this stuff and not seeing your family again more than short-term pain and injury. Okay? That's a big assumption. Okay? But, you know, again, that, the, and, and, and again, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah. Okay? Hopefully we come up with a strategy that limits our exposure in all of these areas. Okay? So that ultimately we can win. It's still a sucky situation, right? But we have to do the mental rehearsals 
right? So that we make as few mistakes as possible. And then usually everything works out okay. All right, thank you very much for your time. Again, if you have any other questions I didn't ask, more specifics, I do this or that or whatever. But again, I really appreciate you uh, spending your Saturday morning with me. Um, and, you know, the, the people I haven't met, I really appreciate you coming. Those that I have, I appreciate you listening to me even more. So, thank you.